like a hell cut. Hello and welcome back to the channel. And you might be wondering why we're doing a conquest video today when it was only three weeks since I lasted one, and that's because Hatchet actually caught back up one week. So I'm only one week behind now, so I actually got all my magazines today. And as well as that, we got the new, the second uh, ring binder as well, so we can carry on collecting our issues in there. So let's just get on with the video. So of course, issue 27 comes with the first part of your Rhino, which is almost the complete Rhino set, apart from sort of like top hatches and all the chaos stuff that goes on these. Obviously, I think a Rhino is 25 pounds off the top of my head, so you're saving money straight away with this issue. And let's take a look. It says the Death Guard Rhino, the history of the Death Guard, and the battle for Corvon 2 continues. And it tells us about Space Marines Rhino Transport. This is War Machines Part 3. Gives you them, it shows you an armor rating, their speed, their firepower. And it is an all-terrain transport vehicle. The interesting thing is for Rhinos, um, the Primaris Space Marines can't actually go in them. It tells us about the heraldry and the markings of the Rhino and what the markings mean. Up the top, squad designation, battle line, close support, fire support, veterans and commands. Troop transport such as the Rhino carry the same heraldry and squad markings as the Space Marines that use them. And it tells you about company markings, campaign badges as well. The Rhino chassis, and it explains that the chassis of the Rhino is used for a variety of other um, tanks and stuff. The Vindicator, the Whirlwind, the Stalker, the Hunter, and of course, the Predator. Moving across, and it tells us about the Death Guard Rhino. So this is the Rhino that we've actually got. This is Death Guard War Machines Part 3. And it gives us our general blurb and history of them, like it tends to do in every issue with whatever they're discussing. It tells us the Warbands and the Victoriums, the Desicus, the Apognos. The Apognos is a Rhino with a powerful Demonic aura and an ill temper. It serves the apostates of Contagion. Delightful. Over the page, Death Guard Chronicles of Virulence. And so this is Death Guard Legion 5. With all of the information there, I'm not going to bore people with this. M41 time of outbreaks and a variety of things for you to read. I do read all of this, by the way. When I do my videos, I'm basically opening the magazine for the first time. I've not looked at it um, at all so far. Angelic Vengeance, Battles 13. So that will fit into the battle section of the folder. The machine spirit of the Rhino is to be admired. It is brutal and resilient, just as the space marines who ride within. So obviously it's a battle that uses the Rhino, which makes sense considering the Rhino comes with this issue. And it tells us how to build the main chassis of the Rhino. Very straightforward instructions, as always. The instructions are always good, I feel, with the the instructions on building them. And it shows you the standard Rhino. And there's your built Rhino thus far. And then it moves on to show us how to carry on building it when we get the next parts from the next issue, including the guy on the top with a closed hatch or an open hatch. All of the extra gubbins and accessories, spikes, and everything that goes on to make the Chaos Rhino complete. And there's all these extra symbols on top to really customize it. That's why I like the Chaos Rhinos more than the normal ones, because they do look more brutal, more dangerous, and more unique. Blockade, mission number 11. The Ultramarines controlled areas, the Death Guard controlled areas, the contested war zone, the Southeast Gate. A force of Ultramarines have pushed the Death Guard from the Southeast Gate of Barakius. Seeking to keep their only land route into the city, the Death Guard launch a coordinated attack, both from inside and outside Barakius. And then it gives us this massive uh, two-page picture almost, and some more information down the side. Turning over, Roadblock. 
it shows you the space marine zones and the rules for this battle requiring five plague marines, 12 pox walkers, the tainted cohort and the foul blight spawn against the five intercessors, two hellblasters, three aggressors and Calcius. Victory conditions. Both armies gain one victory point for each enemy unit eliminated. At the end of the game, each of the tank traps is worth three victory points to the player who controls it. You control a tank trap if you have more units within three inches of it than your opponents at the end of the game, and the game lasts for five battle rounds. That is it for this issue, and it explains, obviously, we get the next part, and it shows us how to paint the rhino, and it tells us that issue 29 comes with that um, sergeant sprue. I believe it's from the Dark Imperium set. So let's go take a look at the next issue. Okay, so issue 28 obviously comes with the second sprues for your rhino. All the little bits, the extra bits to finish it off and give it that wonderful chaos rhino look. Here we have it, complete your rhino. Learn about Mortarian and add transport to your games. Predator battle tank. So this tells us about... War Machines 4 for the Space Marines, the Predator tank, armor rating 7, speed 6, firepower 7. Obviously you don't get these in the collection, but it's telling you about them nonetheless. And it gives us the Annihilator and the Destructor. They have obviously different weapons and it tells us all about them. On here, moving over the page, Death Guard Predator Battle Tank, War Machines 4. So it tells us about the, the Death Guard version as well we've got the excoriator the scorn and we've also got the gorgus and it says death guard tanks on the right flank turn us about before they hit our side armor death on damnos battle number 14 so there's more more stories for you to enjoy and read i will take a closer look at those a bit later on, Mortarian, Birth of a Primarch. So this is Death Guard Champions 1. Mortarian, the a leader, I believe, of the Death Guard. More reading material and more information about him there. The Death Guard. On Barbarous, Mortarian's own personal retinue came to be known as the Death Guard when he assumed command of the 14th legion the dusk raiders he immediately renamed them in honor of his barbaran warriors and of course then it tells us how to paint the death guard rhino and you will need quite a variety of colors spray it death guard green is the obvious starting block then all your silver bits la di da di da quite a detailed setup and a detailed uh, painting guide and there it looks and it's full glory at the end obviously i do like tanks they are even though the rhino is not obviously a a focal point of your army because of its size and stuff it does stand out so it's always good to make them look as good as possible transport so this is tutorial 24 and it explains how troops can be transported in in battle via um, transport vehicles such as the rhino Transport rules, tank traps, disembarking, explains it all in detail as they usually do. And it tells us the statistics for the Chaos Rhino up here. And it tells us about its combi bolter, havoc launcher, and exactly how to um, use them and what they're capable of. Board the rhinos, they shall deliver us to battle behind a shield of rust and putrefaction. Taste it. Mission briefing, mechanized warfare. So this is mission number 12. Obviously, it includes the rhino in the battle. Armored assault. The poxwalker deployment zone, the space marine deployment zone. The poxwalkers deploy in the city block shown on the right. The blight hauler and rhino will move onto the playmat from the mat edge in their first turn. Move them on one at a time. Though the road, uh, um, through the road is shown to the right. Measure the move starting from the mat edge. And it tells us we'll be using the Blight Horner, 12 Poxwalkers, the Rhino, 5 Plague Marines against the 5 Intercessors, 2 Hellblasters, the Redemptor Dreadnought, and the Librarian. Victory conditions. 1 victory point for each enemy eliminated. At the end of the battle, the Death Guard play against 2 victory points for each unit 
that ends the game in the Space Marines deployment zone and the game lasts for five rounds. So there we have it, issue 28 and it tells us that 29 obviously comes with those models and 30 comes with more scenery as well, the Riser Ruins Terrain Kit. So let's move on to our next issue. Okay, so moving along, we've got issue 29, which comes with our Space Marine um, Captain and Sergeant Sprue. So, of course, we've got our Inceptor leader here. Now, you might be wondering why have I made him and stuck that on there, because if I spray him, it's going to spray the stand. That's what I did with the first one by mistake, so I'm going to have to do it with all of them, so at least they all look the same, if that makes sense. We've got our Hellblaster sergeant here we have got our intercessor sergeant here he's quite a nice model actually and we've got our captain obviously the best model there with his power sword and power fist very nice so moving on to the magazine then space marine captains history of the space marines and new rules for your games my position. So it tells us about Space Marine captains, and they are heroes number four. Battle for your role, commander or melee combatant, and it tells us the various gear that they may well use. Shoulder pads, arms and armor, honorific titles, and there's a big picture of a Space Marine captain. Moving across, we've got chapters 1.8 of the Space Marines. Brotherhood at War. General reading material. The Age of Strife, the Dawn of the Imperium, and the Age of Rebirth. And it tells us all about the Ultramarine Second Company. This is Space Marines Chapters 2.5. And there you have the detailed layout of the Ultramarines Second Company. Again, this might not appeal to everybody... But it appeals to some people. Battles number 15 next. Champions collide. More story and reading material there. I'm not going to go into it. A surgical strike. If well planned and executed, can cause an entire invasion force to falter and collapse. Captain Arkaran of the Ultramarines. Second company. Moving across, you've got Demons of Nurgle. Plague Bearers. These are the factions 2.1.4. Hmm, he looks pretty tasty, doesn't he? With his tongue and his horn and his nice big sword. Yeah, the picture of good health. <clears throat> plague bearers and the death guard tells us more there. Summon the plague bearers. Let them spread their sickness through the ranks of the foe. Blech. And then, of course, it tells us how to build our space marine officers. Step by step. Good instructions, as always, to build them accurately. And then it goes into painting them. About and black. Lead Belcher, of course, this is after you've probably sprayed them McCracker Blue. Uh, it's not called McCracker Blue, is it? Whatever the blue is called. Is it called McCracker Blue? I can't even remember. But yeah, once you've sprayed them blue anyway. Um, Mephiston Red, Retribute Armor, Agrax Earthshade, Non Oil, and they will look pretty impressive as our models should be starting to look pretty impressive now as we've got a good collection of colors i am behind on my painting i'm not going to lie i'm well behind finding the time to do it when i've been at work a lot and stuff is a bit it's a bit tough if i'm honest it shows the backs as well and they do look pretty good hopefully mine can look relatively close to that Arkaran arrives mission 13 protect Arkaran. the traitors must be repelled so this Captain here, the figure, is, I assume, what we're going to be calling Arkaran. You are not required to think, only to act. Interesting. Eliminate Arkaran. And that is Lord Feltius, the Tainted Cohort, the cohort, cohort, Foul Blightspawn, the two units of three Plague Marines, the 12 Poxwalkers against two three-man intercessor units, three... In the three Hellblasters, two Inceptors, Lieutenant Calcius, and Captain Arkaran. Wow, that's quite a big battle, to be fair. The Death Guard gained three victory points for eliminating Arkaran. The Space Marines get three points for taking out Feltius. Both armies gain one victory point for each other enemy unit eliminated, and the game lasts for five turns. 
Nice, and it tells us up here the statistics for a captain in Gravis armor, what weapons they can use, and how good they are. That is the end of this issue, and this issue tells us, obviously, our next issue, 30, comes with that. And then 31 doesn't come with what it said on the leaked list. It comes with a second pot of Death Guard Green, which I don't need. I don't know about anybody else. I definitely don't need that yet. Celestra Grey, I do need. And a medium layer brush, which we've already had. So, um, I'm not really sure why they're giving you another medium layer brush. Another Death Guard Green. That's not going to be a great issue. The issue is about Robot Gilliman, his orig origins, Plague Legions of Nurgle and painting with grey. I assume that's going to be like highlights and stuff. So issue 31 doesn't look to be uh, a great issue, if I'm honest. Value for money-wise, it's okay. But the fact that we don't need these two things is a bit of a bit of a letdown. So let's get on to the, our final issue. Okay, so issue 30 comes with the Rise of Ruins, and these are actually big, strong, really tough, durable um, models. They're actually really nice. I've not had any of these um, before, but they are thick, they're heavy, and they actually feel like genuine value for money, and they're really nice. They slot together well, they are solid, they don't wobble. These are actually really, really good in my opinion, so I'm actually impressed with these. They have, they're, they're the nicest... Um, bits of scenery we've got so far, definitely without a doubt. Anyway, let's get on to taking a look at the magazine itself. So issue 30 is all about learning about the Primarchs, Heralds of Nurgle and new terrain rules. The Primarch, so this is history part 11 of 40k, more reading material there. They were superhuman beings created by the Emperor to lead his armies to war. Well, they must be pretty good then, must they? To be fair, at the top we've got Leon L. Johnson fights Night Haunter, Horus Lupercal duels Lehman Rus, Fulgrim battles Ferris Manus, and a uh, nice bit of art down the bottom. More story kind of stuff. Chapter planet. So this is space me chapters of one point seven. More general um, chit chat, which doesn't really have any relevance in terms of battling and stuff though. Home worlds, and it tells you about. Home worlds of different um, sections of the Space Marines, chapters, whatever. Demons of Nurgle, Heralds of Nurgle, factions 2.1.3 tells us about the Heralds of Nurgle and the Pox Bringers. Nurgle's favour, always watchful of his minions, Nurgle himself selects the most accomplished Pox Walkers and rewards them with special tasks. One such individual is Wretch Gablar, who is tasked with studying the effects of Nurgle's plagues on mortal specimens. Well, lucky him. City of the Dead, battles number 16. The Forces. World Eaters, Heretic, Astartes, Imperial Fist, Space Marines. More battle chit-chat there. World Eaters, and obviously, if you like these stories, then you'll like that. Then it tells us how to build the Rise of Ruins, which is pretty straightforward, as most of it just clips out and only two pieces actually slot together. Don't even need any paint. Very nice. And these are actually easy to paint, but do look impressive when they're done. So spray them a bad and black the easy one. Then uh, some dry brushing, painting out your detailed uh, metal bits, retributor armor sections, null oil on, on bits to highlight it. Followed by some Agrax Earthshade and there are your completed ruins and they actually look really impressive and they shouldn't shouldn't be too difficult for anybody to paint in all fairness. A bit of Mephiston Red in there too. Ruins. So this is terrain number one rules. It tells us about cover and moving through ruins. Cover in ruins explained more. Other units as well. Other units like vehicles only gain cover if more than 50% of the models in the unit are blocked by the ruined model. In order to check this, you will need to lean down and get a model's eye view. Self-explanatory. Barakius campaign map. So this is playing two rules. All about a campaign. Territory, congested territory, death guard territory. As well. And here's your map where you'd mark out if you do the campaign and stuff. Obviously, you need people to you need someone to be playing with regularly to do that. Urban Carnage. So this is mission number fourteen, and it's got a detailed briefing there. Heresy grows from idleness. Uh, 
So I expect we're using the Librarian and the Dreadnought and a few of the other things. In this battle, let's take a look. Five Plague Marines, the Chaos Rhino, the Tainted Cohort, the Foul Blightspawn, and the Biologus Putrefire against five Intercessors, three Hellblasters, five Reavers, Primaris Librarian, and the Redemptor Dreadnought. There's the Battlefield Zone A, Zone B. Victory conditions. Both armies gain one victory point for each enemy unit eliminated. The first player to eliminate an enemy unit gains one victory point. Each objective marker is worth three victory points with each model within three inches of it, which, whichever team has more in, in close proximity gets it, and the game lasts for five turns. The battlefield. Before rolling for deployment, both players must place a single objective on the board. This objective must be more than six inches from deployment zones and more than six inches from any other objective marker. Roll off to see who places the first objective. And this battle is called Escalation. And that's the end of the issue. So, of course, we look at the top, we know what we're getting in that issue. I've already said didn't look to be a great issue to me. Then the next one, issue 32, comes with the Primaris Apothecary. Now, if I remember rightly, he was meant to be in issue 31, according to the leaked list, I think. I think he's a £22.50 model as well. So that's, you know, you're saving a lot with that issue in terms of retail price. Um, I will double check that. But yeah, that's it for this one. Our four issues done. I felt, in general, actually, these four issues did, did provide you with good stuff. The Rhino, the four models, and the Ruins. I think that's been a pretty good collection. So... Thanks for watching this video. I will be back, whether it's in three weeks' time or four weeks' time or five weeks' time. If we're behind again, I don't know. Wait and see. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.